Hey YouTube, this is Sean, just back with another quick tip to help you replace your brushless motor bearings in your RC cars, RC vehicles for that matter. Um, not necessarily um, including the airplane style brushless motors where the outer housing turns, but the traditional ones. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, this is a traditional brushless motor out of an, out of an eight scale Chuggy. I've already pulled the rotor out and as you can see, the motor, it has, I'm gonna turn this, so there's the output side cap, and I've already pulled this apart, I've already, this is the bearing, it actually fell apart, it, it was destroyed, so it's time to change those. Probably should have had better maintenance on that. There's other videos out there that can talk to you about bearing maintenance and things like that. Um, but I made the mistake of cleaning this out, and I just simply forgot to lube it, it was a whoops on my part. Anyway, so you've got that cap, but that one you can see, you can see straight through the, the center opening where that bearing would hit, would rest. And you can usually just use some kind of a punch that's a little bigger than the diameter of the rotor shaft to be able to get on the end of that bearing and tap it out. Um, so that one's the easy one to change out and just swap it out, just be gentle with it. These are precision milled pieces to where those bearings fit nice and snug. Um, but there's that part of it for you. Sometimes it helps to heat them up with a hair dryer. This, these housings are made out of aluminum. And so, um, aluminum will expand pretty quickly. It takes heat pretty quick and it'll expand and loosen that fit up a little bit for you. Here is the back end bell, they call it. And this one you can see does not have a through a hole that goes all the way through it. And so to get that bearing out, so I was trying to think of different ways where I could do this because I didn't have the bearing puller per se where it's a, a couple little fingers that would go down in the center of that hole and you can grab it, ex tighten it up to grip it and then pull it straight out. Um, if you have that tool, great. You're probably not watching this video because you already got it done. Anyway, if you're trying to get that bearing out because that bearing has failed too or um, it's had some wear on it like was the case for mine, that front one failed, this back one Still felt pretty good, but I decided to just change them both since I was there just as a preventative measure. So that bearing is also semi-pressed in there also. How do you get it out? So the trick that I found, this is something that I used with working on cars. And that is with like a, if you're replacing a clutch, there's a bearing, they call it a pilot bearing that's usually in the end of the crankshaft. You can't get to that backside of that bearing to press it out either. So what the, the trick that we've used there is grease. You stuff the inside of that hole full of grease and then take a bolt that's the same size as that to, um, and you'll have to kind of impact it. And I'm gonna use the rotor as an example in this for you. So I'm gonna get that in there. We That rotor obviously fits that bearing just right. But you basically pack grease down in through that hole and then you use the that shaft or something comparable to it for the eight scale motors. This is a five millimeter shaft, but you press that material down into that hole and it creates a reverse hydraulic press. And so it'll curl around the back side of that bearing hole or of that shaft hole and press the bearing up out of there. And so it works really slick. So I tried that initially and it didn't work really well for this application because guess what? The grease was squirting or was coming right around the dust cover of the bearing and so it wasn't being very effective. That and it was making a mess. Um, and so I found on another one where they had tried bread, just a piece of sliced white wheat bread, whatever search your fancy. Um, and they packed that down in there and then did the same process. Well, guess what? That worked and it worked really, really well. Um, <clears throat> it will destroy the old bearing. So if you're trying to save that bearing, don't use that process. I would say avoid using the grease process or the or the bread process there because it, what it does, and here's my old bearing. So you can see that bearing, this is the side that was facing down to where you couldn't see it in the case there. And that bread, there was such pressure in there that it actually collapsed that dust cover. If you look close, see if I, that's about as close as I can get for you. You can see how it's kind of bent in 
And so that bearing is, unless I had new dust caps, that's what it should look like, or like what you see there. And so that dust cap basically is ruined on that other side where it's all recessed like that. And so this process will ruin the old bearing. If, if you're changing it, it was probably bad anyway. But that's a quick trick to pop that out. Hope it helps and saves you some grief, but it works really good. If you are using your rotor as your five millimeter shaft to press that bread into there to push the bearing out, that shaft is also precision. We don't want to disrupt that. We don't want to disrupt the, the position of the rotor on the shaft. And so what I used is I just used a phone book on top of this just to protect that, that end so I wouldn't mushroom it out from hitting metal on metal with a little hammer. And go light on this, guys. You don't need a ton of pressure going down in there. Make sure you're lined up in that hole, too. Um, but put the phone book down and then hammer on top of the phone book to protect that shaft so you're not getting a metal-on-metal metal blow on that. It also softens the shock a little bit for the, the rotor assembly, so hopefully um, you don't do, misalign that at all. Anyway, have a great day.